Deep in the Slavic forest awaits the Leshy, towering above the trees and eagerly looking for weary and lost travellers to have its fun with. The Leshy are quite an interesting set of spirits that are depicted in numerous ways throughout Slavic mythology. Now some of you who have followed the channel for a while will know that I have previously discussed the Leshy in a video going over some of the strange Slavic creatures, but I've always been a big fan of Ents and Tree People, so the Leshy get their own video. In terms of what a Leshy actually looks like, they normally resemble a large human being, with long green hair and beards made from living vines or grass. It's believed that when a Leshy is at the centre of the forest, they appear as a giant tree, as their long limbs resemble tree branches and their grassy facial hair means they can easily blend into the trees and greenery around them. As they travel away from the centre and closer to the outskirts of the forest, they shrink in size until they are so small they can be mistaken for leaves and shrubbery. They do however have a distinct pair of bright green eyes, which is probably the easiest way to distinguish between a Leshy and a regular tree. There are a few different types of Leshy, with one of the most common being the Trickster Leshy. These are not really described as being evil, but at times they can take their jokes and their pranks a little too far. They often take pleasure in interacting with travellers, misleading them and confusing them, causing them to wander deeper into the forest. The Leshy do eventually grow bored, allowing these poor victims to leave. Giving travellers a fright is another thing that they've been known to enjoy. They do this by imitating the voices of people that wander into the forest, making it sound like these voices are in their own head. Oddly enough, there are people who have claimed to have had friends and family members who have been tickled to death by Leshy. There are Leshy who are far more protective than trickster-like, and these serve as protectors of the forest and the wildlife inside. They're said to have a noticeable bond with wolves and bears, and this is surely aided by the fact that they can transform into any plant or animals that can be found in the forest. If there is more than one Leshy that inhabits a forest, then they generally have a fight for the territorial rights of that forest. Fallen trees were sometimes described as being the aftermath of one of these struggles. Despite not having a great relationship with other male Leshy, they still live with their wives and their children. So if you thought that one Leshy was bad, then I imagine an encounter of an entire family of trickster spirits would be less than enjoyable. So if you are being pursued by a family of Leshy, then how exactly does one escape? The sign of a cross was believed to be the most straightforward option. But some believe that if you sat under a tree and put your clothes on backwards, then you would gain the respect of the Leshy and they would let you go. I have no idea why this would actually work, but maybe some Leshy just enjoyed watching humans make a fool of themselves. Now if you do somehow manage to befriend a Leshy, it is said that they will share with you the secrets of the forest and their magic. It became a pretty common practice amongst farmers and shepherds to make packs of the Leshy in the hopes that they would protect their crops and their livestock. The Leshy are another one of those creatures where you never really know what exactly you're going to encounter, be it a trickster, a protector, or even a family of killer trees. Your guess is as good as mine. As I mentioned earlier, I've always been a big fan of Ents and Treebeard in particular, ever since I read and watched Lord of the Rings, and I'd like to think that the Leshy could have in fact been one of Tolkien's many influences. The depictions and even the names of Leshy naturally differ, depending on which Slavic country that you're from, so feel free to share any differences and similarities you may have encountered with me in the comments below. As always, I've been your host, Mythology and Fiction Explained.